Hello and good afternoon everyone. Greetings. I would like to welcome you all to New Testament Church of God Luton's online service this Sunday. And I pray that all of you who are watching, that you are all well and looking forward to be um, worshipping us, worshipping with us today um, as we just continue to just give God thanks for all that he's doing. Hallelujah. And we are not in our usual place, um, as you can see again, but we just continue to just give God thanks. And we know that we can worship God and wherever we are, there is no limits to where God is. And hallelujah. And in fact, we are the church. We are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And so wherever we are, the spirit of God is with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus. And so I would like to give greetings to our pastor Cox and to his wife, Sister Donna. Uh, greetings to our Reverend, Jer um, Reverend Bridget as well. Greetings to you and to my Reverend Jarrett, my husband as well. Give you gre greetings. I would also like to greet, do special greetings to our worship team and our musicians um, who unfortunately cannot be with us or with me, should I say, um, but I just give God thanks. We have such a wonderful worship team and it's, it's such a blessing to have you. And so I look forward to that we can be together, we can be amongst one another again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And for today, I just would like our minds to be focused on worshiping God, hallelujah. I want our minds to be on the things of God, hallelujah, this afternoon. Hallelujah. We are blessed to, to, to know a wonderful God who cares for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that he gave his only begotten son for us, that we would be saved. And so we are just so, we are just so ecstatic right now. And I just want to thank God. Hallelujah. That we serve an awesome and mighty God. Hallelujah. And I do not want our minds to be distracted by the things that we are hearing or the things that we are seeing around us at this time. Hallelujah. There is so much negative press. Hallelujah. And if we're not careful, these things can come to overwhelm us and to put burdens upon us. Hallelujah. But today, I really just want to just have our minds fixed upon God. Hallelujah. And just to worship him. Hallelujah. For Jesus came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. And so I would like to encourage us today to worship God, hallelujah, relentlessly, no matter how we feel, no matter what the situation, no what is happening around us, just to worship, hallelujah. And I actually came across a wonderful quote this week and it says, when you turn your worry into worship, God will turn your battles into blessings, hallelujah. So we don't have to fight the battle. God has already gone before us and he's already doing it for us, hallelujah. And in Exodus 23, verse 25, it says, worship your God and sorry, worship your worship the Lord, your God and his blessings will be upon your food and your water. And I will take sickness from among you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the Bible tells us directly that we are to worship God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So let us worship God in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. For when we worship God, it brings us into his presence. Hallelujah. When we worship God, it brings us into his presence where he, where we can see his almighty power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Worship sets the atmosphere. Hallelujah. For God to move by the power of his might. Hallelujah. Chains of bondage can be broken. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the enemy is defeated. And the glory of, of God descends upon us. Hallelujah. And we are victorious. Amen. We are victorious. Hallelujah. So when we are in the presence of God and when we worship God, hallelujah, we are in that place where God's will can be done. We're in that place where his spirit can move. Hallelujah. It can move mountains. Hallelujah, Jesus. And all things are possible through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so at this time, I would invite you to just worship with me wherever you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, we were created to worship you. And so, Lord God, we come to you right now, Lord Father, as we give you worship. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank
thank you Jesus thank you Lord sorry thank you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah sorry we're just going to start again hallelujah we're just going to sing to worship you i live thank you lord thank you lord just worship the lord wherever you are hallelujah hallelujah
you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's continue to worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we come before you right now, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And we worship the King.
you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, because God, hallelujah, all things, hallelujah, is possible through Jesus Christ. He is able to do the exceedingly and the abundantly beyond we could ever ask or think. Hallelujah. Our God is able. Hallelujah, Jesus. Do not look at the situation, but look at God. Because he is able. Jesus, we thank you because there is no limit on what you can do, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Believe it, don't give 
Jesus. And at this time, hallelujah, we're going to open up with prayer. And I'm going to ask if my daughter, Nyla, hallelujah, she's going to, she's been asking this morning if she could do the Lord's Prayer. And I said that she could. And so she's going to say the Lord's Prayer for us as our opening prayer for this service. Our Father, who works in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, scratch for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trust us against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And dying of the good in the plan of glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I just thank God for her. And we just have to continue in to encourage our young children. And if they want to do something for God, we shouldn't stand in the way. And so I'm so glad that she was able to do that for us today. And at this time, I'm going to ask um, our Reverend Jarrett if he's going to come and welcome you all. Thank you, Jesus. Good afternoon, one and all. I welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus. It's a beautiful day. I had my shades on. I don't want like you. Beautiful day. As the sun radiates outside and the heat extends itself to us, we give God the glory for everything he does. We give the God the glory for this is the day that he has made. And indeed, we rejoice and are glad to be partakers of it. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to come before you today. It's an honor and a privilege to worship and know our mighty King and our Lord and our Savior. It's an awesome privilege to call upon his name and know that he is there and he's the ever-present God. I want to welcome everybody who is either on the Zoom. Hello, Zoom. Everybody on Zoom. Hello, on everybody on Facebook Live. Welcome to today's service. I want to Welcome and say hi, Pastor Cox and Sister Cox. We love you. God bless you. Reverend Brooks, I see you there on the Zoom. God bless you. And to all our brothers and sisters in the faith, from my home to your home, we send our love to you all in the mighty name of Jesus. It's truly a privilege and an honour to be able to call upon his name and to know him and to be able to honour him in spirit and in truth and the worship my wife just led praise god for the worship praise god for the worship i know she poured a lot in you know this is what we got to do in preparation for anything we got to learn to pour in so that so he does what he wants in and through us and i thank god for my wife and what god is doing in and through her life and i just thank god for this opportunity and this time that he's given me to be able to come before you my brothers and my sisters you know, it's an awesome privilege to be able to stand before the people of God. And it's, it's not something I take lightly. I know the, the weight that this carries. I know the weight that it carries to speak to anyone about what God wants to say, especially in these last times. You know, it's something that I, I do not take lightly in the slightest. And I want to take this opportunity to say, you know, that, uh, I really am thankful to the household of faith, to all our brothers and sisters from New Testament Church of God, 
I want to say I want to say I love you to everybody and thank you for joining us today again. You know, the word the Lord gave me that I had to present to you today is a word that he actually gave to me on um, January the 18th, 2018. You know, when I was asked to speak today, I always go before the Lord and ask him, what should I say, Lord? What do you want me to speak? You know, and I always wait for his confirmation and God does amazing things he does amazing things to direct us to where he wants us to go if we but just learn to wait and listen and know his voice and the word that he gave me today was a word that he gave me on that particular day in january 18th 2018 and he led me back to the writings because anytime the lord speaks to me i always write them in my journal and i write and document what he's given me and oftentimes when the Lord gives me a word, he'll not only give me writings, but sometimes he'll give me illustrations. He'll get me to draw. I'm not the best drawer, but I would draw to the best of my ability what he wants me to present. And so today with um, what the Lord has shown me to give to you, but it's also applicable to myself. Anything that comes from a preacher's mouth has to be applicable to themselves as well. And I'm not excluded from what the Lord is trying to say to his church today, especially Specifically during this period of time, um, I want to just say, Lord, have your way in your church, have your way in your people in these last times. If you've got your Bibles, I would like you to uh, just grab them. If you've got your phones with your Bible apps on them, if you can grab them, please, and turn to Exodus uh, chapter 34, and we'll be reading from verse 29. I want to read the text first, and then I'll give you the theme of the word the Lord has given me to give to you. I hope you're all comfortable in your Sunday best, your sandals, <laughs> your socks, your shorts, whatever you're wearing, be comfortable. Know that you're comfortable in the Lord right now. Whatever you're wearing, whatever your apparel, it's all good because we are in the presence of God. Regardless if you're in your home, I'm in my home, the presence of God is around us. Praise the Lord. I'm just going to read from verse 29, like Exodus verse 34, verse 29 to the end. Now it was so, when Moses came down from my Sinai, and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hands, when he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Then Moses called to them, called Aaron, and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them as commandments all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And he would come out and speak to the children of Israel, whatever he had been commanded. And whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses shone, then Moses would put the veil on his face again. And he went in to speak with him, went in to speak with the Lord. We want to say amen to the reading of God's word. Amen, amen to his word. Everything God does is perfect. The word here is truly to the glory of God. He's given us an illustration on an example of what happens when we get in his presence. So today's theme, the theme the Lord gave me back in January 2018 is soaked with his presence. That's soaked with his presence. So the question I have to do for you today, everyone, is how much do you want God? How much do you hunger and thirst after him? Do you really want to know him just like Moses knew him? 
Just like Jesus knew him. Just like Jesus would take the time and slip away in the morning while it was still dark to go speak to his father. Or he prayed all night and spent that time with our father. Know that it, you must count it all joy when we're in his presence. There's nothing on earth like it. And Moses had first-hand experience. But the thing I want to draw out from this verse of text is that this glory was all over Moses. So much so that the Israelites were afraid because the glory shone from his face. The word said he shined. And when I think of the word shine, I think of radiate. He radiated the glory of God. And the thing is, one of the points I want to bring up here, Moses didn't even realize that he shone. Moses had no clue. Only when they said, your face is shining, did he realize and know and acknowledge that the glory of God was shining upon him. Not only that, his skin was the evidence of the glory. His skin was the radiantness of God's presence was on him. And they were so afraid that Moses had to veil his face. He had to cover them because they were afraid. But whatever God had put on Moses, they were afraid of the repercussions that would come on them if they were seen to have done anything wrong in his presence. And Moses sets a great example of intimacy with God. The people watched Moses as he went up to spend time with God interceding for them in the intimate personal communication and it changed them more than any sermon could have changed them and if we want to enjoy and have an intimate relationship with God our father as Moses did and as Jesus did we must practice what both Moses did and what Jesus did no wonder the psalmist says in Psalms 34 verse 5, those who look to him are radiant. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This is the significance of being in the presence of God. You will radiate his glory and your face will never be put to shame. You know, I woke up Tuesday and Wednesday, and I got a word from the Lord both mornings before I even got out of bed. As I was still sleeping, I heard the Lord say this Tuesday. He said, and he gave me an illustration, and I'll give you the definition of the word radiance. The definition is light or heat as emitted or reflected by something. And also radiant actually means great joy or love apparent in someone's life, expressing Expression or bearing a glowing quality of skin, especially an indica indicative of good health or youth. And you may, you may, you may have ter heard the term when, a, when you see a pregnant woman and you may say she's glowing. She's glowing with new life. And because new life is in her, she's got the glow that new life brings. But the, 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 the essence of what we're pulling out of the scripture to here today is God wants his children, he wants you and he wants me to glow with his presence because his presence ultimately is the thing that's going to change our life. See, if Moses never went to that mountain, he would have never received the instructions. If he never spent time with God, he would have never known how to direct the children of Israel. They, he would have had no clue. But the fact that he subjugated himself to going into that holy of holies, that place where God says, come before me. And God spoke to him like a friend. That's what the scripture tells us in the previous chapter. God spoke to him face to face as a friend speaks to a friend. You see, the more time we spend in his presence, of the Lord is the more we will reflect the glory of God. And this is the illustration he gave me Tuesday morning, just as I woke up. He said to me, just like the more time we spend in the sun, the hot sun, is the more we reflect the radiance of the sun. And our skin may glow and darken because of the effects 
of the sun and the time spent. However, the, the effects of the sun are temporary. God wants his children to come unto him. That's why he told us in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 that we have boldness to enter in into the holiest. That is his presence by the blood of Jesus. And he wants us to have the lasting effect of his glory in every area of our lives. I'll give you another example of the light and the radiance that God showed in scripture. When Jesus was transfigured on, the, on that mount, he shone. <laughs> the word tells us in Matthew 17 too, that Jesus' face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as light. And as the example to the Lord, what the Lord gave me on Tuesday morning, you spend time in the sun, you'll see the effects and others will see it too. And this is what God wants his people to know, that if you spend more time with me and give me what is mine, that is the praise, that is the worship, that is the honor, and that is to give unto him what is due unto him anyway. And if we but subjugate ourselves to do those things, what we should rightfully be doing and offering up those sacrifices of praise, we will see the evidence of God all over our lives. Amen. It'll be evident. It'll be evident to yourself. Eventually, if you don't see it straight away, I, get, I guarantee you, someone will point it out to you, just like Aaron pointed it out to his brother Moses. Do you not know that you're shining? And you'll be in that moment, you'll be like, well, I have been spending so much time with God. But this is the thing. God wants us in his presence. And you see the thing? I've got my arms outstretched, but this is what God is doing. He says, come, come on, come to me. Come. And I, was, I just want to hold you in my arms. I just want to caress you. I just want you to spend time with me. I want you to tell me about your day. I want you to tell me about how you feel. I want you to tell me and express to me what's going on. I know what's going on, but I want to hear it from you. God knows everything, absolutely. But he wants to, us to open ourselves up, avail ourselves and say, Lord, I'm struggling. Lord, I, I don't know how to do this. I, I don't know how to think. I've been put in this position and I don't know what to do. The Lord wants us to say, you know what, Lord, regardless of my feelings or what's going on around me, Lord, I look to you. I can't, I don't have any answers nowhere else but in you. So I'm going to go into my secret place and hide myself in you because you're the one who sees me in secret. And you're, you're the one who says you are in secret in Matthew 6, 6. And you're the one who says, you will reward me openly. I didn't ask for a reward, but you chose and you've chosen to do so. You know, and I think about scripture, how often through the apostles and through all the writers of the word of God, we see the results of drawing close to God. Lord, he says through James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you and in Hebrews eleven six, it says for he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him not only that in Matthew 6 one of the beautitudes is this are you thirsty for God that's a question for you blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they will be filled they will there's a guarantee there's a will there so it, it's going to happen you will be filled with him. And as the Lord has directed me to tell you and speak to myself in this given moment, God wants you and I to separate ourselves regularly. He wants us to come out from them. He wants us to make space and time for him. Too often, we allow ourselves to say, well, I'm too busy. I've I got this going on and I've got that going on. So I'm telling you, even during this lockdown period, you, well, I would ask, what, what excuses do we have now? And even if we're not in the lockdown, 
God is saying to you, I have given you 24 hours in every single day. How much time are you going to give to me? See, we allow the adversary to, to get in the way and distort and disrupt that what God has for us to do for him. And if we but just say, you know what? I'm going to be intentional about my time spent with other. I'm going to be intentional and I'm going to be diligent right now in this moment to set aside time in every day and say, Lord, this is your time. Regardless of what's going on around me, I'm going to enter in and close the door. You know, God also wants us not just to make time, but he wants us to have a heart that says, Lord, I seek you with all of my heart. There is benefits when we seek him in sincerity. There are benefits when we seek him in truth. Because the word tells us he is spirit and those that come to him and worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Next, listen, we have to learn what it means to listen and to obey God's voice. And God wants us to get into a place where we, uh, we, we must practice silence and submission. I say that again because it's important because too, too many of us uh, don't understand what it means what it means to be silent and I, I'm, I'm guilty of that I'm guilty at times it takes practice to to learn to be silent in his presence I know sometimes we can sit there and only two minutes have gone and you think to yourself nothing's happening uh, 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 but God is saying just wait God is saying just wait you know, and he will renew your strength in the moments of waiting. That's why the word says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He shall renew your strength. Even when it feels like five minutes is gone, ten minutes regardless. What matter, no matter the time, you say, you know what, Lord? You know what's best. And I subject myself to you. Regardless of what my body's telling me, regardless of what my mind's telling me, my body's telling me to get up and make a cup of tea. My mind is telling me, you know what, God is busy. <laughs> but God is saying, you know what, just wait. The tea will come afterwards. The, the, the chicken and the rice and everything else come after. But when you spend time with me, I will renew you, I will strengthen you, I will encourage you, I will give you everything you need. You see, the thing is, we often think we know what we need, but most of the time we don't really know. You see, God is, has the great and grander picture, and he's the one who knows exactly what we need. So when we spend moments in those times with him, he's the one who is going to indulge us with that great revelatory knowledge of what we're supposed to do, what we are supposed to say, and where we are supposed to go. I say that because I think of Jesus. Jesus, all the time, would always point to his father. Jesus would always say, you see the things that I do? I do them because I see my father do them. <laughs> you see the things you hear me say? I say them because I hear my father say them. <laughs> this has to be our position. Jesus is our example. And then the only way we're going to know what God wants us to do or where he wants us to go or what he wants us to speak is when we get in his presence, just like Jesus did. Jesus took the time. The word says he spent all night in prayer. And oftentimes you look at scripture and you realize, you know what, when Jesus went to pray, he was often alone. In fact, he was always alone. I found through scripture that he was always alone when he prayed. He prayed alone, secluded in that secret place that he tells us about in Matthew chapter 6. Next, I want to go on and talk about what, what, another reason why God wants us to come before him. He wants us to enter into covenant partnership with him. And you must remain faithful and committed just as Moses was a trustworthy partner with God. You know, in Exodus 33.10, the Lord spoke to Moses as a face to face, as a man speaks to his friend. That's a beautiful thing. In fact, the, the word tells us that Jesus, he actually says, I call you friends. I call you friends. 
The next thing God, why another reason why God wants us in his presence is he wants us to learn to be still and wait. The instruction that Jesus gave us in Matthew chapter six, he says, but when you pray, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in secret and your father who himself is in secret will openly reward you. And you know, when we th th think about and put perspective on the door, we have to understand that the door has purpose. We close the door behind us to shut out everything that's creating the noise in your life so that we may spend that quality, purposeful time in his presence. Door has a purpose and he wants us to use that door and close it when we go before him. Your life is his. So at the end of the day, just like it says in Colossians chapter 3 verse 4, when Christ appears, who is your life, you will appear with him. Christ is our life. And the best we can do is to honour him in what he has given us the instruction to do. Matthew 6.6 6 is the instruction. See, time spent with God will not only reveal his power and purpose that will come out of your life, but just like Jesus, we will truly learn the will of our Father and speak what he speaks and go where he wants us to go. You see, there is safety in the presence of God. There is peace, there is love, there is joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Pleasures forevermore. Jesus wants us to start our days just like he did. Slip away while it's still dark and go before our Abba. Go before our Father. I'll tell you the second a revelation that God gave me on the Wednesday morning at the end of this sermon. Time is going real quick, so I've got to move on. But God, everything's going to work out. Don't worry about time. Early will I seek thee, O Lord, the psalm told us. Psalmist told us in Psalm 63, verse 1. He goes on to say, my soul is thirsty for you. My flesh longs for you, and in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. God wants us to have the position of thirst for him, because we can't go before him truly with a heart desiring him without being thirsty. Just like when Jesus was before the Samaritan woman at the well, he said, the water that you drink right from this well will only make you thirsty again. But I'm going to, I will prepare to give you waters that you will, that will never make you thirsty again. That is what God wants for us to never be thirsty. And the only way we'll learn true holiness is in his presence. No. Yes, Lord. He wants us to envelope ourselves in him and close the door and if we wait on him and be of good courage we must know that he will strengthen our heart and we must confidently expect him to do exactly what he said he would do we must stand on his very promise the promise of his word he says ask and you shall receive, he says, seek, and you will find, he says, knock, and the door will be open. And we must take him exactly at his word, exactly what he has said. And we must understand that the word of God is his law book. And he is a God who honours his own word. He is a God who honours his own order of his word. And he is a God who will do and perform his word for his glory and for our good. So the question for all of us in these last days is, am I radiating the glory of God? Jesus. And now the question, if you, if you think you are or you're not, is, how can I, or where do I start? 
Oftentimes, the illustration given before with Jesus and the well and the water, Scripture gives us an understanding that the revelatory truth about water is, is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And when the Lord gave me this word, he illustrated to me a sponge. A plain old sponge. A sponge. What does it do? Well, we know what it does. Is your life like this sponge? Is it dry? Is it thirsty for water? Does it need more than the sufficiency of the world and your own understanding? The word says in Psalms 42, as a deer panteth for the water, so my soul longs and must long for him. Jesus. Before I give you the illustration that the Lord gave to me, I want to just point something out to you. No need to close the door behind you. Oh my God Almighty. The Lord gave me this as an illustration. He, drew, he allowed me to draw it. I don't know if you can all see it. It's a bowl of water. And when I got the bowl, I said, Lord, I, I couldn't find any clear bowls. And the Lord said, you have to find a clear bowl. You have one. I looked and I found one in the cupboard. Now, I'm going to give you the definition of what it says, what it means to immerse yourself. The word, by definition, of immerse means to submerge, and submerge means to go below. It means to go beneath, or to put in or sink below the surface of water. And so it involves oneself deeply, or to involve oneself deeply in an activity. So as I say this is our life, many of us are here just on the surface of the water, just on the surface of the water. God doesn't want us to remain on the surface. You see how much volume is in here? There is depth in the water. There is depth an almighty God. He wants us not to stay on top. You see how the sponge just sits on top? It's not moving, it's not going any detail by itself. But the, the word is telling me, and the Lord spoke to me and gives me an illustration, that if you want more of God, you've got to go below the surface. You've got to submerge yourself. And you have to be intentful. You have to be diligent in doing so. You have to be intentional. You have to have a heart that says, Lord, I may be on top, but I am prepared to go beneath, to get deeper in you. To de I'm going to go in to my secret place, wherever that is. I may go to the park and call that my secret place. I might go in my cupboard and call that my secret place. I may be out walking and that's my secret place. Wherever that secret place is, God is saying to the church in these last times, do not remain on the surface of the water. The water, again, is symbolic of his spirit, his Holy Spirit. And he's crying out to the church, if you but just go deeper. And the thing is, when we go in, he doesn't want you to dip in and dip out. <laughs> I'm going to say that again because the significance of the dipping in and dipping out means you have only a tiny little bit of what God wants you to do. So that's why time spent will result in the soaking. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Don't remain on the surface, brothers and sisters. God is waiting on the other side for you. <laughs> God is waiting on the other side. And without fail, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I'm telling you again. Yes, Lord, yes. Uh, without fail, soaking has a reaction <laughs> and will change your life. <laughs> I guarantee you, if you decide to go beneath the surface, your life will never be the same 
again. And I say, don't do this a one-off or a two-off. Make this your life. <laughs> Every day spent in time with Almighty God. I guarantee you'll realize there's nothing like it. It's so very, very sweet to be in his presence. I've been in his presence where I never wanted to leave. I say, Lord, my wife's calling for dinner. What shall I do? He said, go to dinner. Go to dinner. <laughs> Come back afterwards. But time spent with the Lord, you will understand and realize for yourself and you will have the experience, just like Moses did, just like Jesus did, of being immersed. You see the immersion happening right now? You know what's happening to this sponge? It's absorbing. <laughs> it's absorbing the water. It's absorbing everything that's beneath, <laughs> not on the surface. See, if it stayed on the surface, it wouldn't have any of the benefits. Mm. There are benefits to being under the water. Hallelujah. And it may pop up, but guess what? It's still in the water. <laughs> yes, Lord. I, I, the Lord gave me a word. He said, um, he said to bask in his presence. Bask in it. <laughs> Do you know what bask means? It means to lie exposed <laughs> to his warmth and his light. <laughs> and, it means, and it means for us to relax and have pleasure to be with our maker, our Lord, our saviour. Now, if I take this sponge out, you know what's going to happen, right? I don't have to tell anybody. You see what's happening here? This sponge still has water even though some has dripped out. Just like Aaron saw on his brother, there will be an overflow on your life. What I mean by that, this is the word the Lord gave me. He calls it the drip. You see, all those around you will see and know. But not only will they see and know, but they will begin to see and know the effects on themselves. It's going to begin to affect your family when the more time you spend with God. It's going to affect your household. It's going to affect your friends. The more time they see the glory of God around you. Some people may not even understand it. They may be like, what's going on around you? It's beginning to do something to me. <laughs> it's the drip. It's the overflow. This is why Tasha Cobb sang the song, Fill Me Up. Till I overflow. Mm. I wanna flow over. Oh, Who wants to flow over? Anyone? Online? Hallelujah. Zoom? Facebook Live? Anyone wanna flow over? I know I do. Yes, Lord. I want to flow over with His presence. I want to flow over with the glory of yeah. God. I want to be soaked and mm. so penetrated mm. by His holy presence of my life. That in everything I say and I do and everywhere mm. I go, I know that God, not only is he with me, he's, a, he's with me anyway. Mm. But he's the one who's sending me. And he's the one who's causing me to speak the things that come out of my mouth. And I can only do that when I truly get in his presence. Mm. And I learn to submit to his perfect will. And I learn to walk in obedience mm. to that word. You see the word which Jesus gave us. The obedience that comes out of Matthew 6.6. 6, the instruction. The prayer. The before the prayer that God gives us. To when you go in your room. Close your door. And what Father who, who is himself in secret. Sees you in secret. He will reward you openly. He will reward you openly. Not only he, he, will he reward you openly, he will allow you to see your life as though you've never seen it before. You will truly learn to begin to walk and know your purpose. Know where to go and how to speak and to do the things that God has already foreordained you to do for his glory. The after effects of the, of the, of the indwelling of God's presence in and around us is going to hug you. It's going to radiate his presence to everyone around you so I encourage you today get yourself in his presence get yourself in his presence with thanksgiving and uh, praise and worship almighty God I thank you uh, thank you father God hallelujah hallelujah I'm gonna read a, a quick story I know we're over time but please bear with me please bear with me because the Lord gave me this yesterday I have an iPad 
which I haven't used in over a year, and somehow the Lord told me to turn it on yesterday. He told me to turn it on. I turned it on, and I found myself going to the notes section in the iPad. I was like, okay. And then he led me to this story. Somehow I put this story in my iPad. His story was from 2015. I'm going to read it. There was a story. This is a story. This is a story of a two-year-old girl who learned this song and was always singing it. There is power. There is power. There is power in the blood of Jesus. And her mother noticed that she never took ill. One day the mother washed the girl's clothes and hung them out to dry. There was a high wind which blew her top into the neighbor's house next door. Immediately after the top landed in the neighbor's house, there was absolute pandemonium in his house. Everything in his house turned upside down. And this man was a spiritualist. Everything he knew to do failed. He did his consultations and then he found out that this small item, this top that was sitting in his living room was causing the issue. <laughs> he tried to pick it up, but he fell backwards with the power that was on the top. Woo. He couldn't make any headway and he couldn't understand what was the power that was in the top. A small little child's top. Oh, hallelujah. And throughout the day, no customers came in for consultations. He battered through the night. And the following day, the wind blew again. But this time, the little girl saw her toy flying next door to the neighbor's house, the same neighbor's house. She went into his sitting room to pick up her toy. Then she realized her, her top was in the room. She went straight away to pick up her top. And in doing so, she's still singing, there's power in the blood of Jesus. And he call, was about to call out to her to say, don't touch it. And then she touched it and took it, continued singing, there is power in the blood of Jesus. This little girl's anointing that she had on her had affected her clothing. Mm. Her clothing, which had been washed and flew next yeah. door. Her clothing, an item of clothing that had the power mm. and the residue, mm. the, uh, the power and the presence mm. of God on it. This is a true story, brothers and sisters. The, the amazing thing out of this story is this spiritualist realized that his power was nothing compared to the power of Almighty God. Amen. This power that he thought he had and that his spirits had was nothing. And in the end, he gave his life to God Hallelujah. because of the power that came out from that little girl's clothing. Thank you. We see the evidence of God's presence even on Peter. As he walked, even his shadow, his shadow, his shadow had the power to heal. I don't know how many of you, how many of you want that power? How many of you want the presence of God over your life? So much it flows out of you that even as you walk down the street, the man who was blind all of a sudden said, I can see. Jesus is the one who told us the works I have done. You will do greater. You will do greater. It's not, it wasn't just reserved for Jesus. He's made it plain for us that you will do the same. But we must learn to go in and close the door. Hallelujah. I'm coming to the end now. I'm just going to give you my conclusion to everything the Lord has given me to give to his church, to give to his people, regardless of where you are in the world. And you call yourself a Christ-like believer. You call yourself a follower of Christ. This word is for you in these last days. God calls you into your secret place and he's waiting on the other side, just like the water which we illustrated earlier. He's on the other side waiting for you to go in the water. He's waiting for you to go in beneath so that he can saturate you with his presence and that when you come out, you will have the residue of his presence all over your life. And God doesn't want you to have the residue just for a moment. For a day or two or three or a month he wants it to be the persistence of your life he wants you to walk in the fullness of his joy and that it be evident to yourself and to all those around you so the word is this soak yourself in his presence soak yourself in his word soak yourself in prayer 
Soak yourself in fasting. Times of refreshing come from being in his presence. The Lord says, seek my face. Our cry should be, your face, Lord, will I seek. Your life is fulfilled in him. And remember, your life is not your own. It was bought at a price, a high price. He ransomed himself for you, and you don't belong to yourself. So all we have to do, myself included, is just to allow God to do what he wants through us by obeying his word. That's the key. Obedience is key. And finally, the results of time spent. You change your life, your character for the better. The more time in the word, the more the word will become part of you. <laughs> and you won't even realize it when you start speaking the word, you'll start sounding like the word because the word is so much in you that it will start pouring out of you. Henceforth, like Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, out, out of you will pour rivers of living water. His word wants to pour out of our lives, but we have to spend the time in the word in the first place to get the water to stay in us and to come out at the given time that God wants it to come out. I want to just show you, to share with you the second part of my awakening, I say, as I woke up on Wednesday morning this time, the Lord says, and he focuses on us doing exactly what Jesus did again. Early Lord will I seek thee. These are the words that came out of my mouth Wednesday morning. I had even pulled off the cover and I heard the words, early Lord will I seek thee. And then I heard the Lord say, try me. If you've never done it before, if you've never tried an early morning time with God, try me. He says, start with this. Challenges to us as a body, wherever we are in the world. The challenge is this, five at five. Start with five days at 5 a.m. 5 a.m. for five days. Try it. I guarantee you, once you begin to spend that time in those five days, you're going to go over the five days. But start with the five. The word he gave me is five at five. Start with the five. Whether you want to start tomorrow or the next day, start. But don't delay. Don't delay. God is waiting on the other side of the door for you to say, Lord. And he's like, come on in. Come on in. Come on in. I'm here waiting for you. Take a seat. How you been? What have you been up to? Lord is now reclining in his chair saying, what's good? And you're like, Lord, you know, I come to you because I'm thirsty for you. I'm hungry for you. Lord, you know everything that's going on in my life, but here's what's going on. I'm going to tell you from my mouth. The Lord is just expectantly waiting for us as his children to come in and close the door. And you know another thing about this word is, I said to the Lord, but Lord, didn't I, didn't I preach something like this some years ago? But he said, no, it wasn't like this. He wants to show you the, the, the consequences of immersion and, mm. and the dire uh, attributes that happens when we only dip. Mm. God doesn't want you to dip. Mm. He wants you to sub merge <laughs> so that the glory of God be all over your life. Thank you, Lord. So my challenge to you, and that's the challenge given to me by the Lord, is five at five. If you can do it, do it. The Lord encourages us to do it, get in his presence. And my last and closing prayer is this. It's the priestly blessing from Numbers 6, verse 24 to 26. I pray that you will receive this, not only the, the words I speak now, but I pray you receive the words that the Lord gave to me and understand that I'm only a vessel. I've been, I've been given this opportunity by God to speak to his people. And I leave this with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you <laughs> and be gracious to you. 
the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. <laughs> you see that again? And give you peace. <laughs> God wants to give you peace. He wants to shine upon you. He wants to put his countenance on you so you begin to look like him. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. The Lord bless you all. The Lord keep you all. And during this time, my prayer for everyone is that we cling to him and hold on to him and his promises and say, Jesus, I know nothing, but you know everything. So my heart for you as I pray this closing prayer is that you go forward in the name of the Lord to do as he has instructed us to do. Remember, he says, when you pray, <laughs> there's an expectation that we do so. Enter in through the door. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Wherever you are in your homes or outside, wherever you're doing in your gardens, enjoy your day. Remember, this is the day the Lord has made. Rejoice. And when you see the sun outside, remember the words the Lord gave me to give to you. You want to reflect and radiate not just like the sun, but like the almighty God and the son of God on your life. So God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. God bless you from my home to yours. We love you all. In Jesus name. God bless. <laughs>